Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Bish's RV. Let's try this again. The Cedar Creek 388 WDM. Um, that's some weird alphabet soup and this RV industry certainly has quite a bit of it. This is a, a front master bath ensuite with a guest half bath downstairs, but I like how Cedar Creek always finds a way to just put a half twist on everything. This is not the same front bath and a half floor plan you've seen from everyone else. Now, certainly they, it shares a lot of similarities. Like we have that big opposing super slide living room kitchen area with all of the windows over on the door side. That's, that's always here. But what they did here is they moved the laundry out of the master bath and actually integrated it into just a giant storage cabinet down in the half bath. Now, what I like about that is if you are looking for laundry, talk to any like full timer who has a washer dryer set up in their RV, who's maybe had RVs over the years, they will almost unanimous, anyway, unanimously agree, nailed it first time, no edits, that uh, the, the lower deck is the best place for the washer dryer machines. Not to mention, especially if you're going to travel, they get less bouncing and jouncing. Now, a big rig like this, I really see more as something for seasonal type use, especially at about 13,000 pounds dry weight. Uh, but everybody camps a little different. Some people have big trucks and some people just want to cruise around and see our beautiful nation. I can certainly respect that. Um, this is the first brand new Cedar Creek that's ever been brought on this channel. So I really welcome all kinds of feedback, but there are some very different things about this brand, things you can't see, things I want to explain. I am really excited about this. If uh, you've been a regular viewer, if you've ever seen me talk about Cedar Creeks in the comments, I have long held a very healthy respect for this brand. And I, I don't usually make really strong personal like claims or whatever. This is my personal opinion. I personally truly feel pound for pound, dollar for dollar, they are the best built, best structural fifth wheel I've ever seen. And I'm probably every time I get into a Cedar Creek, I'm going to say this. This is a brand that I personally respect so, so much. Um, back when this channel was Halid RV, this is a brand that we very seriously looked at bringing on board. I've been through their factory. I have seen them built from the ground up and I really like what I see on them. Um, now the, the thing with the Cedar Creek is a lot of the, you, you, like you just look at this camera. I don't think it does it justice. Um, I think you have to get into one of these. You have to learn their story. You have to understand what separates them and makes them different to really appreciate them. Uh, because like when we get in here, um, there are certainly some other things that maybe have a little flashier, fancier appeal. I actually rather like it's, I call it understated elegance. They don't make it so in your face. And they use a lot of different suppliers like for things like different furniture, just all kinds of stuff like that. But I've got a ton to cover on this. Uh, I, I want to do a Steven Tyler don't miss a thing on here. So let me start from the top. This floor plan actually has three of those rain censoring Max Air vent fans. Um, this also runs on a 30,000 BTU dual whisper ducted air system. Um, it's racetrack ducted. It's there, you know, I swear every single manufacturer claims they have the most effective and quietest air conditioning system out there. Unfortunately, that's one of those things that because they all claim it equally, it's hard for me to give any one of them, uh, you know, greater credence over the other. So perhaps what I'll do this summer is I'm going to get a bunch of these big RVs right next to one another. And I'm going to say, all right, Let's duke it out. Let's kick on the air and let's see, uh, you know, which one of you is actually the quietest, gets the most airflow. For now, what I can tell you is that between their air uh, system and their insulation package, it's going to be plenty effective and comfortable like almost any other big fifth wheel. You've got, it, it's actually deceptive because you look at this, you go, why didn't they put big windows in the slide? They did! So I'm like 6'3 with my little fuzzy hairs, what little I have left on top of my head. Uh, standing next to the window valence. So this is like a good six foot or more, you know, six one two something in there. Then I step out of this thing and you see how much room was above my head. This has, they have like seven foot ceilings. So they do have big windows. They just have enormously sized uh, slides over here. What I also like about this is what's going on with the entry door over there. Because again, we have plenty of door side window coverage. And are you noticing the day and night roller shades all over the place here? So you've got a peak window right here for the door. 
But notice the door itself doesn't have a window. I like that because it gives me the ability to, uh, you know, peek outside and see what's going on. You also do have a handy little peep hole right there. Uh, you know, in case you want to kind of have a, a, a little better view of what's going on. Although, I don't think that could hold a candle to all the windows on this floor plan. But they use that same little peephole uh, on all their models, you know, just in case. This is one of the big fifth wheels that still does have a carpeted slide. Uh, a lot of people prefer carpetless. That's fine. We've got things like uh, Keystones and Jayco's and Grand Designs in our lineup that do carpetless slides in a big layout like this. There are also some people who still like that warm feel of carpet on their feet. That's one of the reasons I love carrying uh, almost every single towable RV uh, out there we have within the Bishes lineup. And I am really enjoying the opportunity to bring more of that expanded content out here. Uh, the uh, uh, you know theater seat recliners directly across from the entertainment center in the uh, RV Nerd No Neck Wrecker Entertainment Center, of course. Um, they Notice how they don't really taper the roof line down a lot. Like if you look above the slide, yes, it does taper down a little, but not severely. And that allows them to maintain some big storage over the sofa in the back there. Now, let me actually crack that open, give you a little bit of a look at it here real quick as we also come down and we get a look at that huge, like triple section, uh, high to bed sleeper sofa on the back. And again, everyone has different preferences. There are some people who really, really like to have a, uh, a sofa with side stands uh, beside it. This one obviously does not, although it does have a perfect little spot over there if you wanna hide some TV trays. And the sofa is not mounted off center. I actually wrestled it off center so that you could see it is free floating if you want it to be. Um, but there's also some people who prefer a larger sofa like this because sometimes you just want to kind of stretch out, lounge across from the TV. Now, notice I'm not like trying to cheat myself up or anything like that. This is a nice, long, big adult size sofa. This is the kind of thing I think if you're going to spend extended time in the RV, at least once you're going to have, you're going to like lay here. Uh, maybe a little warm sun coming in, you're going to do the old thing like this where you just kind of zonk out for a while. You might get all curled up, all snugly with a blanket on you. you got the electric space heat and footsie fryer going over there. And this RV uh, is a televator model, so the TV doesn't pivot. But sitting here, it's not too bad. I'll give you a look at that in just a second. Now, you may have noticed when I uh, popped the hide bed open, um, this is a inner spring hide bed there are several areas where you might look at this RV. You might look at a Cedar Creek and go, man, that's a little old fashioned. You ever hear the phrase though, they don't build them like they used to. Wait till we start talking about the structure of this thing and you will see that maybe never was there more a true example than how these things are put together. And just so you can see that sofa is free floating. Um, it's not my personal favorite thing they, uh, I like that they have outlets beside the sofa, and they don't have side stands. I would have, I think, preferred to see some outlets like over here in that little nook just over your shoulder would have personally made a little bit more sense to me, but I'm nitpicking on that. By the way, you notice how they have a traditional outlet buried just in the sidewall. That actually is a neat little clue into a little quiz question I'm going to give you later. Ask yourself, how did they do that when normally... On a laminated wall, that's not something that can be easily accomplished. Um, I, I mentioned this is on that televator right here. One of the things I like to do is put you in the driver's seat. Let's give you the point of view here. Straight across from that theater seat, this is what we're looking at right here. And, of course, you know, we got the sofa over here. We can have a nice little visiting conversation corner. Um, and this floor plan, it's, it's kind of like if you've ever watched any home improvement show, every single time, what do they say? Let's take the wall down be uh, between the kitchen and the living room and just open everything up. Well, that's this floor plan in a nutshell right here. As opposed to a kitchen or living room, it's more of a grand room design. Now, if you prefer separated kitchen and living, certainly Cedar Creek and many other things within our lineup have that. Now, I said uh, TV's on a televator. And do you have 100% viewing of it from the sofa? No, but... At the same time, I don't think it's that bad. Uh, let's get into the kitchen here. And there's, this is a campsite cook's uh, dream kitchen. And I'm going to break normal form because so many things in this RV are very different. And I'm actually going to start over here with the island and work around. 
To begin with, this does not translate well to video. This island is a chunk of space, Batman. This thing is huge. Um, also, uh, the uh, the corners, they did round off just enough where if you bump into it with your belly, you don't feel like you're getting stabbed. As a guy with a little bit of a dad bod, I, I appreciate that. But like, again, people who have full-timed, something that I hear all the time is, I don't have a sink big enough for my pots and pans. First of all, the, the right-hand sink is bigger than the, quote, farm sink in a lot of other RVs. It just has a massive pots and pans basin next to it with those roll-away dish drying racks that I'm a big fan of. Little sponge drawer. She's sponge-worthy there. Place for a wastebasket or, again, some other big stuff or a couple wastebaskets. And uh, just the, the general fit and finish on all the cabinets are like, one of the things I look for when I go through RVs is I find where a, uh, a cabinet rail meets a style, the vertical meets the horizontal beams, and it's it's flush every time in these. And that is because the uh, seniority, the average time uh, an individual worker has been working at Cedar Creek is among the longest in the industry. Cedar Creek seniority boards are ancient. They're considered like a, a, a destination job for RV builders. Um, and they are a little bit picky about who they bring on. Um, it's one of those things that you can't see just by looking at the RV. Again, having been through the factory, I really appreciated that. But uh, that's just scratching the surface. I think they do a fantastic island, but then it, it just keeps going. So like this whole front wall is like floor to ceiling pantry space. And what I love about this, they did the same thing Montana did that I really, really like. Most of the time, when you have a half bath in a fifth wheel, there's a toilet in the kitchen, effectively. But notice that little door in the hallway. That is the half bath and laundry room combo. They gave us like a completely defined kitchen where, well, for lack of a more flowery phrase, you don't have to feel like you crap where you eat, guys. <laughs> I know that ain't pretty, but uh, it's kind of, you know, what a lot of people describe it as. We're looking at the standard fridge right here. This is a uh, 20 cubic foot a uh, residential fridge with a dedicated 1,000-watt inverter. It's not, uh, you know, the it doesn't have an inverter package built into the fridge designed to run a whole bunch of other outlets. I think a lot of Cedar Creeks, it's really expected that you're probably going to be, like, at a park. Like, they tend to be very popular among very serious, like, full-time, say, snowbirds, sunbirds, things like that. But there's nothing that says you couldn't tow this thing down the road regularly either. Um, the symmetry on this kitchen is great, and the size of it. If you actually get in here, like, start just measuring the cabinets when you start comparing brand A to B to C, and you're going to see that this one's a little bit bigger. Um, normally, I gripe about RVs not having a side splash beside the stove, but you don't have that problem here because it's all buried in the middle with easy-reach household outlets because, again, of the different way they're doing their walls. And, again, I'm giving you some clues for a question I'm going to ask you later. Down below... Uh, kind of reminds me of something Montana does in uh, one of their models, the 3231 CK, I think it is. Um, something like that. I can't remember the alphabet soup right now. But almost like a horizontal pantry and a big stove and oven combo right there. So again, if you're going to be in the RV long term, if you're going to be doing some real serious cooking, you have the space to do that. All the cabinetry, by the way, is all uh, uh, pocket screwed uh you know screws into wood there's no mdf facing it is a sticker wrap here when we go up to the champagne series that is when you'll get a a, a full hardwood with uh like a stain instead of a, a wrap and of course you have that televator right there so if you want the extra light or the airflow uh you can have that now one thing they did here that i actually kind of like is the way they put the big symmetry cabinets in the kitchen and the way that the entertainment uh, bar, whatever you want to call it, top right there. It's elevated slightly above the kitchen counter. God forbid you have a spill in the kitchen, it doesn't dribble over into the electronics. Now, I don't know if they did that on purpose or not, but it's just something that I noticed. Now, what's interesting on these is you can kind of, well, they kind of have two heating systems, one electric and uh, one uh, propane, but you can actually expand on the electric one a little bit. So no matter what, you're always going to have the electric space heating fireplace here. You also always have 12 volt tank heating pads on uh, all the holding tanks of every single Cedar Creek. Um, you can also option these to include a heat pump on your main AC. And then up in the bedroom, you're going to see there's like a little small space heater that you can uh, build into these things that 
works extremely well. Now, if you want to combine the two of those things, you will be uh, sweating to the oldies in here, even when it's a little bit chilly outside. Now, something I haven't uh, touched on, and I mean touched on, is the uh, the Firefly control system here. Like, you know, there's one control, like everyone has some kind of smart control system, right? Theirs is the Firefly system. There are little panels. It's very similar to Jayco's BM Pro system. But there's little switches around the RV with like dimmer switch lighting and stuff like that. And you can control everything right here if you want, or you can obviously control it off your phone. And there's very little this doesn't do, but it's like you can make whole separate videos for just these things right here. I don't want to, to bog you down with that. Uh, uh, the, you've got the central vacuum system down here along with the, uh, I call it electric dustpan. And again, the half bath is not like in the kitchen and it's always going to be travel accessible. But before I get into that too far, we will look at this RV closed up in road mode, giving you a look around things here. Actually, sorry, let me pan back down. Let me give you a look at how much leg room is around here. Uh, I found it very comfortable, even as a bigger person about the only kind of wonky thing here is it's a bit of a corner sink, but it works. You know, I, I can, you can stand at it. You can wash your hands. Uh, it, it gets the job done. And if you're gonna be doing things like shaving your face uh, or Uncle Gary shaving his shins, as it were, but only his shins, you know, you're gonna be doing that in the master bath anyway. But that right there, this is what really, I, I think helps define this one. And by the way, you do have another of those rain sensing max air fans in here, but this, incredibly big deep cabinet space right here uh just staring you in the face it could be closet space it could be a coat closet it could be long-term storage it could be a broom closet it could be obviously as you see washer dryer hookups and that's one of the things i like about this they repositioned the washer dryer hookups in this floor plan so it's not eating up bedroom or master bathroom space as is almost always the case so if you walk out of the half bath and you look to the right or if you walk in the door and look to the left, that's what you'd see. If we Michael Jackson moonwalk backwards through here, we start working into the master bedroom. And one of the first things that we encounter is that little space heater module that I told you about. This thing pumps some heat into this room up here. So it's one of those things where, uh, you know, even if you just want a little extra heat in here, or even if you, you know, if you're going to be doing some serious cold camping, you are not going to regret having that thing there. Um, TV uh, installed right across from the uh, the bed in what I like to call a no neck wrecker position, and this is something um, your Jayco's are often very good at. Uh, they have um, like lower accent lighting through your bedroom and master bath, and as I turn around in a second, you'll see that. Not to mention up the stairs there, and I like how it's down low. So if you have to get up at night and navigate the RV, it's not directly stabbing you in the eyes, as it were. And by the way, a little Legend of Zelda hidden storage solution right there. Now, interestingly, the way that this one is structured, there is not storage below the bed. Looking at a, a, a king bed right here in the slide. And I, I try to be fair and I try to be, uh, sometimes it's nitpicky and sometimes it's critical. I do see what I feel is a, um, what do I wanna say? A fault, a, a shortcoming, a, a, a break in logic on this one. Um, I don't like the position of that converter box because when the slide is closed, you basically can't get to it. Now there is a way to override the slide to push it out. So, I mean, it's never like you're going to be stranded, but that is not fun. That is not easy. I dislike that. And very similar to what Montana has done. They've included these like upper stands up here um, with a, uh, a very aggressive kind of lip on them. They basically extended the, uh, the treatment above the windows. Now, what I'm wondering is, if I'm laying in bed, am I gonna hit my head on those? Hi, I'm Uncle Josh the RV nerd. I'm a Scorpio and for $9.95 a minute, I could be yours. <laughs> I always think something where every time I like get a shot of myself laying in bed like this, not to mention the gravity really, really takes hold of the double chin. Anyway, um, I can tell you without, and, and I hold on, I'm gonna pivot you here real quick so that you get to see I'm not like laying in the middle of the bed. I'm laying in a normal sleeper position right here. And I can, uh, of course I'm hitting the camera on the bedside. I can very easily sit up and not come anywhere close to hitting my head on that. Now it works, I think pretty good as a phone shelf. I'm not a CPAP user. I'm wondering if that's big enough for a CPAP machine, which is a problem a lot of big fifth wheels have. 
Um, but like my parents are CPAP users and they've always found these little stands that they'll put beside the bed over here. And you may have noticed there are outlets for that right beside uh, each end of the bed. There's also little platforms you can get from Amazon that you just shove under the mattress to basically become a CPAP stand or a bedside stand if you want. So there are solutions. It's just um, there's only so much space available and this thing's so big. Very few RVs have built in true uh, stands in a slide out that could support something larger like that, like a fan, a light, a CPAP machine. No, no. Forgot my phone. And we're almost done inside, then we're gonna close her up for road mode, then we're gonna go outside. So just giving you another little look here. Um, one of the other things here is these have uh, an extremely tall upper deck. However, I'm gonna go out of my way to point something out here. Because of the way that this shower is positioned, it's above the gooseneck area, the hitch of the fifth wheel. There's extra structure in place there. That means that there is a step up to the shower on this one. And that means at my height of about 6'3", uh, I do need to have my head in the bubble of that one, which you don't have to do with most big fifth wheels. Now, I'm sorry to kind of break this up. This bathroom's a little tricky for me to try to like capture all in one shot. But uh, using the bedroom there as a point of reference, right when you come around the corner, that is where a porcelain toilet is located. And as you can see, just like the half bath, plenty of room around that, and you are certainly not uh, hurting for leg space. And um, <laughs> here's the view from the toilet. It maybe isn't toilet TV certified, as uh, I, I try to find in some campers, but um, I, you know, it's not, it's not the worst looking thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I will also say, this is personal. Some people like them, some people don't. I personally, I could go without the double sink. Um, I I get that it's a big chunk of counter space. I get that in a big RV, it feels right. I do like the almost like Las Vegas style built-in sink situation that they have going on here. Me personally though, I'd almost just prefer one big sink in the middle and then just a giant mirror or whatever but i don't know at the same time this this doesn't bother me by any stretch of the imagination that by the way was a one piece fiberglass uh shower enclosure of course we have another one of those big rain censoring max air vent fans up here but then we've got door number well one i suppose <laughs> we have something that i love this big front corner true walk-in closet this closet is something my mother would love I have pictures as a kid of my mother literally standing on a suitcase and having my brother zip it shut because that's how hard she packed. But at the same time, I'm not complaining. I'm not criticizing. We were always prepared. We were never missing anything. And uh, my, my wife is not quite as extreme, but uh, my wife is also very good at always being prepared for things. What do you think about this? Like, I, I love this because let's say you have a guest for a weekend on that hide bed and they're in, going to the shower. Like, they're not in your closet, in your clothes space, you know? Now, taking the time to close the slides for you in road mode, if you appreciate the extra uh, time we take to do that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. With a lot of master bath en suites, uh, the, the bed kind of cuts you off unless you want to climb over the bed from getting to that master bathroom. Remember, for traveling, you always have that uh, half bath accessible right here. And if I pivot a little bit more, you see you can absolutely 100% clearly access the refrigerator. Doesn't matter if it's the residential, doesn't matter if it's the optional 18 cubic foot four door gas electric two way, you can always get in here. And I was kind of sweating bullets for a second when the slide closed, cause it's so tall. I said, is it gonna hit that ceiling fan? And thankfully, no, it won't. As dumb as it sounds, I have seen stupidity like that in the RV industry before. And it's kind of funny. I remember when they used to, they used to have a picture of a bear on the front of these, the old Cedar Creek Silverback series, which um, was just basically, they, they kind of cleaned up their lineup. They had three Cedar Creeks. It wasn't necessarily super clear which was where and how the, the, the pecking order went. So now there's just the Cedar Creek that we're looking at. And then the Champagne Edition, even ritzier, even glitzier series. Look at this little dork. Look at this little dork over here. What a nerd, that poster. <laughs>
let's get into some exciting stuff here. Uh, <laughs> that big giant cushioning air ride pin box on here, because I mean, she's long, she's strong, she's down to get the camping on. You need something that is going to soften the blow if you're towing that much weight around. Maybe you don't need, you certainly won't regret having it. Now up front here, this is just the standard uh, base front end. Of course, you can get these, uh, you know, generator prepped, added generator. This one looks to be more bare bones. The good news is we got some pretty uh, capable crews. So if you want us to do like a generator upfit on something we have in stock, you don't, like if you're like, I love everything about this except it's missing a generator. Well, let us know, you know, that's the kind of stuff we can make happen. Um, I tell you what I want to do real quick here. I want to, since this is the first brand new Cedar Creek we've ever touched, I want to actually break away and talk about their structure. And then later this year, I might have to go get a factory tour of these things because you got to see it. So I want to play a little game. Um, before I get into this, if you're not at all familiar with Cedar Creeks and don't cheat by Googling it, I'd like you to leave me a, uh, a little note in the uh, comments. Do you think, looking at this, just sitting here, this is laminated or not laminated? Take a second to do that. I think most people are going to say, big fiberglass fifth wheel, of course it's laminated. And it actually is not. This is a very classic method of construction. Cedar Creek is not a Johnny Come Lately brand. They have been around a long time. And what's interesting about this is it is made a little more ish to like a residential spec in that instead of like um, having laminated walls with aluminum uh, studs every two to four feet apart, this is a fully studded out wall. Say roughly every 16 inches on center, you have a tubular aluminum stud in that wall. It is L bracketed in place, but it's not just screwed in place because with the way RVs twist and uh, you know wiggle going down the road, um, you could you could wear out the where the screws go into that aluminum. So it's actually bracketed in place just so that this uh, like um, effectively like space cement kind of stuff that they use um, will will bond and hold in place, and that is really the key to the structure of a Cedar Creek. Um, that that glue stuff that i told you about it continues to cure over time when it rolls off the production line it has the same strength and integrity as a laminated wall and then it continues to cure and get stronger almost like roman concrete if you know anything about that the romans literally made better concrete than we did figure that out um but the structure gets stronger over time if you've looked at old cedar creeks in the used rv market maybe they've been beat to heck maybe they look rough but structurally, they are on point. It can't delaminate because there is no laminate. <laughs> In order for there to be delam, there must first be lam. So it's got residential insulation glued in place going down the walls. And let's say, God forbid, you do have a major, major leak. This is what I call a good bones camper. Um, you could replace a piece of wall paneling. You could replace uh, a strip of that uh, residential, residential insulation. The fiberglass, thick, almost like boat hull exterior on this, the true gel coat, that aluminum structure, it can't fail, essentially. That's pretty awesome. That is pretty awesome. Now, there's a downside to it. It costs about 20% more labor to build this way. This is not the cheapest. This is not the lightest way to build something. But if you talk to anybody who has like looked at RVs for a lot of years, uh, someone who has camped, oh, like once people are in a Cedar Creek, they very rarely leave them. And I think that says a lot. Now notice too, the double awnings here, uh, especially with this being a, a, a front master bath ensuite, you have an extended upper deck. So they gave us a very good size patio awning over here, but I really like how they go with the armless awning here over on the slide wall. Uh, notice where they have that um, awning arm uh, next to the door right there. That is, uh, you know, you're not gonna run into it. They wanted to make sure on the slide face, you still got the awning space, but you didn't run into it. It's a thousand little paper cuts like that that kind of separate this brand. We've, uh, you know, of course, got the drunken Uncle Leash Latch up here, conveniently located right next to the propane cooker hooker. And one of the reasons I like to get down here is other than where the propane cooker hooker is located, because that is a fire code reason they have to leave that gapped open a little bit. 
you will see how they pretty much like fully skirt this. It's just essentially one less way for air to get uh, to the underbelly. Yes, I'm not ignorant with the fact that air can get under there, but you've got a small access pocket versus an entire exposed beam. Now, um, if you've seen some of our other uh, our, uh, RV videos, you may not realize things like this enclosed accessibility material, that, uh, that sectionalized ABS molded material right there, that is something that brands like Cedar Creek and Cardinal originally pioneered so many years ago that the rest of the RV industry is only just now starting to take advantage of and get into. And what's funny is Cedar Creek is actually the originator of a lot of things the entire RV industry uses, but we all take for granted. Now, uh, we're in a uh, show display currently. You might be wondering lately, why have I had so many show display videos? Well, the uh, reason is it's uh, a foot of snow outside and it's freezing. And this gives me an opportunity to come in and capture a lot of very nice looking RVs in a very controlled environment. Um, okay, so I talked about the accessibility thing. That's a Cedar Creek original. Drop frames on big fifth wheels, a Z chassis. Once again, that is a Cedar Creek original feature slide out wiper seals that every RV with a slide uses. Again, a Cedar Creek original feature. The only problem Cedar Creeks have had uh, is, is that they don't seem to be very good at, um, oh, what do I want to say? Uh, patenting stuff. <laughs> you see the uh, abracadabra David Blaine gravity defying step system over here. Not uncommon in big fifth wheels. I just like to point it out when I say, oh, something else I missed. Um, the uh, little cold water sprayer port. Now, earlier I spliced in some footage of the docking center over there, and did you notice how it has a powered cord reel? Um, I, I still cannot, man, I had a, a way to say that that didn't sound stupid for a little while, and then I kind of forgot what it was. Um, I gripe all the time about speakers be being mounted up too high. That is right on the borderline, but I'm okay with that. It's just about head level. It's not mounted all the way at the top of the RV. Now, remember, one of the other benefits of the uh, style of construction, uh, technically called constructed versus laminated uh, um, wall system that they use on this, is it allows them to like run wiring through the wall that you just, you can't always do everywhere else. And again, there's a difference between gel coated and a true gel coat, which is what we're looking at right here. Now, uh, you can see the uh, handy dandy little graphic here giving us an idea that we have a factory standard tire pressure monitoring system, which is, uh, you know, nice little handy dandy piece of mind. There's that, there's that nerd again. Anyway, <laughs> all the windows over here on the door side looking great. Let's talk about a safety feature here. You see the brake lights. Do you see the extra set of uh, taillights mounted up by those windows? You know why those are there? I can actually kind of show you why. So when you're going down the road, you have a tendency to kind of tune out and start looking down over your hood. But when you see brake lights or something, it snaps you back to attention and you snap up real quick. So those extra brake lights are providing more visibility and giving other people uh, on the road a better idea what you're doing here. Now, I think that they might get some flack for this, but I understand why they did it. They have a 300 pound rated accessory hitch. It's not a 3000 pound horizontal towing hitch. Ironically, they it's effectively the same hitch. It just depends on what the manufacturer wants to call it. But you notice it doesn't have the safety chain hooks and stuff like that. I know a lot of other big fifth wheels do. I also don't think it serves a lot of those big fifth wheels any purpose because when the fifth wheel's already this long, eh, most states have a length restriction that you can't tack a whole lot else behind it. So. I know that somebody might knock them for that, but I get why they did it. 190 watt roof solar standard on these, uh, by the way, with a charge controller that you could expand upon. Also with Bishes, um, you're not necessarily uh, stuck with just what the manufacturer offers. On any of these things, we can effectively build you a custom solar package to whatever need and of course budget, you know, works for you. Um, a few little details up here. These are not necessarily uncommon things, but there is one thing I really want to point out up here. Like you've got the, uh, the triple rain sensoring power vent fans on this floor plane, one in the kitchen, the half bath, and then the, uh, you know, master bath ensuite. All of them are going to have those handy little ears right there. So that if you want to add those say roof vent covers or something like that, you can do that, which I'm a big fan of. Also not for the fact of just having rainy day airflow, but there's, I mean, think about what insulation factor exists in this hole right there and the short answer is none 
basically by simply putting that extra cover over those vent covers right there the cover over the covers actually technically that is correct sorry anyway um it will dramatically reduce the amount of heat that soaks directly in through there because now you're getting like indirect uh radiation heat instead of just direct sun blast um i actually had uh one of our viewers send me a thing where he put a uh, uh like a camco or max air vent cover over his power vent fan and stuck one of those heat lasers up on it and and look at this the drop and temperature off that thing was dramatic. I, I wouldn't have expected that large of a shift. Huge difference. So if you're going to be sun camping and not rain camping, those covers are still a, a very, very good thing to add to your RV. Little pro tip for you from your Uncle Josh. And thank you to, oh no, I forgot who sent that to me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> So as always, let me know what you think about her. You've heard me yammer around for long enough now. Um, I, it's been a couple years since I really got to go through them in depth. The entire look and feel of this brand has changed. They used to feel like that trusty, rusty, you know, maybe she's not pretty, but she'll always get you home kind of uh, RV. And certainly all that original structure is still there. But I think they have seriously modernized their look and if you've never seen one i would really recommend you go through one in person i think you might see a little bit more of what i see in them uh now montana makes an excellent front bathroom solitude pinnacle uh they all make some excellent front bath models i would love to hear from you which one do you like better and maybe this year if i have a chance i'll do some big fifth wheel side by side brand battles let me know what you think about that and until then make sure you hit that subscribe button like our video if you appreciate what we do and you take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.